Hi, Fight fans, and welcome to BYB Zero to 60 with Dada 5000. I'm your host, Johnny Ferrace, and we're on fire, Dada. Yes, indeed. Listen, you guys, I'm glad to see that everyone is tuning in to this highly anticipated Bare Knuckle Zero to 60 show. You're now rocking with the best. We are the originators, and I hope you guys are wearing your seatbelts because we're going to take you back into the future. This show is going to be hot, but so don't miss. That's right, Dada, and today's show will first go back in time with the BYB history lesson, where it all began with one of the originals and legends of the backyard, Big D. Big D is astronomically important to the bare knuckle movement because without Big D, Kimbo Slice would not have catapulted into stardom. That fight garnished tens of millions of views all across the world. It created a demand for more, and that's how bare knuckle boxing was born. That's right, folks. And also today, we're going to spotlight a BYB fighter, Rene Rodriguez. Hi, Elia Champ. He's one of the smoothest to ever step in the backyard. A lot of these guys have made their contributions in their own and unique ways. Some of them are still alive to tell the tale, and others will definitely go down inside the Book of Fame. Also today, we'll be showcasing a classic brawl from the vault in 2007, Boondock versus Joey the Gunner. Boondock is a pioneer, so is Joey the Gunner. That fight is epic. It's one of a classic, one of my personal favorites because Joey hit Boondock with a shot from hell, and um, that's the type of shot that paid the rent, and Boondock took it. I think that that's a fight favorite that people is gonna enjoy. I can't wait to watch that one, that's right. And also today, we'll revisit the epic bare knuckle bloodbath between Jay Pressure and Cocky Charles Champion. Definitely, you know, Jay Pressure is an awesome guy, was an awesome guy because he's no longer with us. RIP to him, my condolences goes out to his family. Now, he was somebody that went out there to put on. Every punch that he thrown, blood was drawn. Listen, America was built on this kind of stuff, so it's definitely one that the people and the fight fans out there will be looking for. So I'm stoked to bring this show worldwide alongside the world-famous godfather of the backyard and founder of BYB Extreme, Dada 5000. The oldest combat sports, bare knuckle fighting, has made its return. So let's go. Okay, fight fans, here we go, Dada 5000. What's good, my man? Hey, listen, I'm great. You know, I want to talk to the people about something that's really important. We are the originators and the creators. We revolutionized the way that the world look at bare knuckle fighting. It goes without saying because on this walk was a lesson. And a lot of individuals, you know, they're no longer here. As we go, certain implications are made to make the sport suffer. But I just want to say before the gloves were on, they were off. Before boxing was boxing, before MMA or any other combat sports, it was bare knuckles. So we are here to remind everybody where they originally came from. Now, the gloves are really designed to protect the hands of the fighter, not the opponent's face. When you look at copy box, punch that numbers. It's more than eight to 900 punches thrown inside of a boxing match. That's a lot of times that you're getting your brain, your cranium rocked. And when you look at MMA fights, right, you still have a barrage of arsenals that's coming at you from elbows to knees, the kicks, the punches, submissions. Bare knuckle fighting is a lot safer. It's a lot more entertaining and no one has ever suffered a fatality in bare knuckle sports. And I just wanna bring to everybody the glove. This is the glove that we are using now. And it's almost like an MMA glove because it has the thumb support, but it stabilizes your wrist. We are on the cuff of bringing history to the forefront because bare knuckle fighting has made a U-turn, history repeats itself, and we're back and we're here to stay. Okay, Dada, here we go. Back in time to that infamous backyard fight when a then bouncer from a porn company, Kevin Ferguson, turned Big D's eye into Sunday sauce. Now, that old pixelated video then went viral and Kimbo Slice was born. And Big D went on to be a big player in your backyard. Definitely, you know, I understood the value in Big D. Even though everybody was gloating over Kimbo Slice, without Big D, there would be no Kimbo Slice. And there was still a lot of value that was added into Big D by us because we put him back in a position to be relevant and to make a comeback because a lot of people was like, hey, listen, 
if Big D does what he do best, you know, maybe they could see a Kimbo Big D on the main stage, you know. So we started working with him, got him involved inside the backyard. He did a couple rough special guest refereeing. He did a few, you know, backyard bare knuckle fights. But inside Perrin, a lot of individuals have problems with the law. He ended up getting removed from circulation. Well. Hopefully, Big D will make his return and get back into recirculation one day, but until then, we're doing work. It will be definitely a plus. The fans will love it. We would love to give him, you know what I'm saying, the break that he deserves. Can't wait. All right. We're back, Dada. We're gonna dig into the BYB vault from a classic from 2007, Joey the Gunner versus Boondock. Hey, that's gonna be a fight. Fans' favorite there. I can't wait to see it again. All right, well, you know what? Let's watch it. Definitely. All right, here we go. Boom. Joey the Gunner against Boondock. Hey, look, there's Big D. There you go. You know, pioneer there. Uh-oh. Wow. Oh, he got caught He got hurt early. Yeah. He got, definitely, he yeah. got hit early. Now he's holding on smart. Southpaw. Boom. Ooh, straight right wow. in. Wow. That punch there could pay the rent any yep. day of the week. You know, those body shots without gloves on, that yeah. uppercut, up, uh, up. Uh, they fell that eye. Yep, yep. Uh oh. Take a knee. Can you take a knee? Wow. Is that it when he takes no. a knee? Or? No, no, he's supposed to be giving him a count. Mm. That's intense. That's a very yeah. intense environment. Wow. Very. He's down there. So, what do they say? What are you saying to him back there? Well, I'm just letting him know, you know, man, take your time, you know, get up, just beat that count. Right, right. Okay. The count seems like it's going on kind of long, though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, Big D, he's uh, he's a brute, but, you know, this was new to him, being a referee. Right. As you can see. Right, right. All right. Come on, Joey. Joey, come on, Joey D. You got it. Don't play. You heard him. Right? Put a little water on him. Yeah. Give him a drink and push it back in there, right? Definitely. All right. That's wrong. You know, it's not how hard you get. It's what you do after yep. you get hit that makes the difference. Yeah. You know, and I like that. You guys gave it a little bit of a breather. You just didn't, you weren't so stringent on rules. You're like, let me, let him give him a little breather and go back at it, right? Definitely. All right, good. All right, Joey D, think he's ready? Joey D, did he come from a boxing background? Yes, he, yes, he does, actually. I can tell. I can tell. I know my boxers. I know my boxers. All right. And Big D about ready to let him go again. Here we go. We got a little faint there. Joey D trying a couple jabs. Go. Oh, oh. Wow, yeah. yeah. Came right at him again with straight punches. I well, tell you what. Well, 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 keep in mind, he was uh, definitely targeting that eye. Yep. He had a bullseye. He hurt him early, yep. and um, he had a target. Yep. So that's the second time he went down. Is there like a three knockdown? Well, this, well, this, yeah, that's the second time. So on the next knockdown, you know. That would be it then, right? Oh, yeah, okay. Charm. Charm. Overhand, right? Boondock. Oh, oh straight yes, left hand. Yes, yes. Yep. Again, that eye uh -oh. was definitely the target. That may be it for Joey D. A big D in there. But these are also the same principles that the backyard was founded and built upon. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people don't don't understand the culture of it. You know, the importance of it. You know, but they see the benefit of it because we sent more guys pro out of this backyard than any other dojo or MMA camp in South Florida. Word. They come near, they come far, and they come from all over, you know, to be a part, you know, and to get that one shot at glory. All right. There he is, Boondock, the winner. Big D raising the hand of the winner. All right, Boondock's winner. Classic. There he is. That was classic that's what it was right there right definitely you know it was very very intense the backyard is intense you know if you could fight there you could fight anywhere in the world right. a lot of people they talk it but they can't walk the walk but back there you know the environment is small you're in the ring with your opponent and you're fighting and i'm this close to you <laughs> and i'm a spectator yeah. so you have to have focus yeah. and you have to understand that you know you're not guaranteed to walk out of that ring how you went in it's interesting you say that, because I picture that compared to boxing. In boxing, they give a lot of room around the ring. And when you're in the ring, I've always felt like you don't really feel the people outside. You don't feel the crowd as much unless, you know, a big hit, whatever. But to have the people that close to you and it being that intimate and knowing it's all on the line, 
Good shit right there. Definitely. And also keep in mind, right? Bare knuckle fighting is a gentleman's sport. Back in the day when you used to put them up like this, right? So I feel like, you know, they say boxing is the sweet science and I salute to that. But bare knuckle fighting is a true gentleman's sport because this is where it all began. Yes, sir. All right, fight fans, and we're back. This time we're in a fighter spotlight with BYB veteran Renee White Boy Rodriguez. How you doing, my man? Hey, thank you for letting me come on your show, man. I feel great, man, and thank you, Dada, as well. I'm feeling like the champ. Right. You know what I'm right on, man. You are a veteran of the background. When I say a veteran, all the way back to 2008, you were fighting way back then in Dada. How'd you meet Dada? I met him through, um, what was it, Bad Dunk? And yeah. Rob, um, I was fighting uh, at, um, off US-1, what was the, the place called? KOBs. No. Yeah, the kennel, something. Yeah, and that's I fought a couple of fights there, and then he was doing a documentary with Adam Polo, and Level was there one night, so Rob talked to Dada, see if we could do a fight at, what, 12 o'clock at night? Yeah. Because um, Billy wanted to fight me at that time, so we went over there, his grass was full, and History was done after that, after I beat Billy. Wow, and history was done, and it's all over the internet, too. You search on YouTube, you search Hylia a white boy champ? No, white boy highly a champ. You Say it again? Know. White boy highly a champ. You already know. Come and see me, David. There you go. Over a million hits on a lot of those old school fights. Dada, take us through some of those 11 times, I think, he fought in your back row, right? Yeah, you know, and I'm going to be honest with you. Even though he is talented as well as... A pioneer, you know, I think the best part of his performance is when he do the cha-cha-cha slide. <laughs> ah, the cha-cha-cha slide, is that a victory dance? Yeah, hey, listen, his opponent, Matt, Matt MFD Delanoid, says that he will not get a chance to do the cha-cha slide over him. He's going to be all over white boy like a cheap suit. Oh, that's a big talk right there. Well, I know that with all your experience in the backyard, 11 bare knuckle fights. He should, he should be fights. used to being with top of guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to happen. It's a bare fist fight. Come on. This is not MMA. Come on. There you go. We're going we're gonna to talk about MD here in a minute, but I kind of want to reminisce back in the day because you guys have such huge history together and it's all over the internet. But, you know, your early fights, you were the main event a lot of times in the in the backyard in the greenhouse. Talk about those moments and how it feels to have those fans right there in your face. It's not like that anymore. It's not like right in there. So give, give a thought about what that's like. You know, I really didn't have the fans right there, but I had the enemies right there. And that's why we had that fence, just because in the fight before, and they were shooting. I beat Billy the first time at a warehouse. You know what I'm saying? And we were recording with Telemundo. Of course, thanks to that, you know, he let that, that happened. We did it over there, and then we did it at his house when we cut the grass. I asked for a fence because, yo, they were gonna shoot me or stab me in there. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So I might as well have a fence. If you're gonna kick me, kick me, but you're not gonna right. just poke me. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Made the fight done within two or three minutes. So there you go. Fight was done. Like everybody else underestimates the big dog. You know what I'm saying? It's okay. I don't even know who Matt is, but I picked him out. Give him a chance. I'm gonna give him a chance, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, you gotta give him a chance, give him a career before he's destroyed. That's why I'm here, just to enjoy it and, and destroy it and take people's little names. You know, I also wanna, you know, just, just, just plug in. That's what we do in the backyard, you know? You have a lot of individuals that come in the backyard and you leave it all in the rain. And, and I just wanna say that, you know, I front load all of the guys that can come back that we let them know what we're to expect of them and what they are to expect of us. And I could tell just by a five minute conversation if somebody is cut out for that, you know? And uh, yeah, that fight with Billy was fueled. They did have a prior situation. That was not inside the backyard for the record. Mm -hmm. but, you know, we, uh, we did get a chance to um, resolve that. It was one of the bigger fights ever put on inside the backyard. And we brought the stars out, you know? You cannot go another place that have had more attention. We've educated the world more about the culture, about the history of bare knuckle brawls more than anybody the past 150, 200 years before us. You know, so we're true pioneers of it. You know, we've come a long way and now we're at the top and we can look back of the trail that we set ablaze. This guy was one of the workhorses, one of the work engines, you know, you. that definitely, you know, contributed to us getting here. Listen, I was the promoter. I did a lot of things, but these guys were the ones that was in the rain. Yeah. You know, it takes a big pair of cojones to get out there because you're not guaranteed to get out how you go in. And these guys know when they put on that armor, 
You know what I'm saying? They're going to war. You know what? All documented brilliantly on the documentary Dogfight. You can see on, I believe, Netflix. It's out there a few different areas. But Dogfight, you guys obviously both starred in that. That was huge for you guys. And, and talk about the reach and how Dogfight took it from the backyard and sent it worldwide. My city, Perrine, Miami, Florida, 305, Dade County, you know, is no tougher than any other city over the world, right? Because violence is, is a thing. You know, and I feel like we just got catapulted in that spotlight because we documented and we reported and recorded it and we put it out there. But this stuff is going on all over the place, but it's just not being recorded or documented. But at the end of the day, you had record breaking numbers with Dogfight, you know, on Netflix to the point that, you know, they wanted another one. And Billy Corbin said, hey, if he have knew what he knew, at that point, even though we only had Dogfight 1, he would have sold them Dogfight 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Because, listen, this is something that, you know, you have to experience, and it's just as addictive to any drug. Once you get a taste of it, you turn into someone who loves that action, you know? And nobody did it how we did it in the world's biggest backyard down in Miami, Florida. That's right. Now Evolved have had three uh, sanctioned matches so far the first yes. one the battleship yes. um which was located the battleship was located on the seven seas Boom. you know and i could tell you like this when you look at our percentage right we've had three fights we've had more than 30 plus bouts and maybe two no three no two have went the distance you have to say why is the trigon ring different from any other fighting form. It's the most feared, the most dominated, the most respective fighting form in the history of the sport today. You have those three sides. It's not a boxing ring, which is known for wrestlers and boxers. It's not an octagon, which is known for MMA fighters. It's the mighty trigon. Notice what's associated with the mighty trigon. You know, the pyramids. People are still wondering how did they do it like the pyramids? Hey, did they have help? This, that, or the third? Look at the Bermuda Triangle. Look at your money. Look at it on the back of your money. It's a triangle on the back of your money. The triangle has always been at the center of speculation, controversy, and attention. So it is the most dominating is fighting form known to man today. And these guys, when they get out there, they show you how effective it is. These corners have names. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Because once you get baptized and you go down inside the mighty trigon, you're not getting up the same. It's gonna be a big difference. You fight on a Friday, you may be at the Social Security office on a Monday, you know? <laughs> but this is what we do. And nobody on the planet does it like how we have done it. We are the originators, we are the creators, others are imitators and duplicators. You could copy everything, but you can't copy respect. Respect, you have to earn, and that's what we do best. And what you've done now, we've had uh, three live shows, you have a fourth one coming up, and right here is your main event. There you go. Hey, listen, they say Wrangling Brothers and Bonner and Bailey Circus is the greatest show on earth. I beg to differ. BYB Extreme, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championships is the greatest show on earth. And the co the main event is White Boy versus MFD. You heard Dillamore. that, right? You heard that main event. Yep. There you say, go. say thank you. <laughs> say thank you. You know, and I really feel like that fight would not, you know, disappoint. Both of these guys are coming out with TNT in their punches and in their lungs. And when I say two warriors, even if it's just in mind, heart, and spirit, they're all coming inside the ring. They're competing for a shot at yeah. their goal, but they are coming inside the ring with a belt on. You can't see it, but it's a belt of pride, yeah, you, you know? Right. And, and, and that's the important belt, you know, because you're in the front of thousands of people and it's gonna be televised. You wanna get out there, you wanna do what you do best. We don't fold under pressure. This is the time that you stand up and you rise and let the world know what you're made of. Or dance. There. Or dance. Or get on your bike. There you go. <laughs> Draw four coming up. Main event, Renee Whiteboy Rodriguez, Matt Delanoy, newcomer to Bare Knuckle. Matt Delanoy, you are a veteran of Bare Knuckle. I feel a little, uh, a little uh, drive on your behalf. I feel you, you were talking about you're giving him a chance. 
I have. To bring to the, you know. Because I was talking to Dada the other day, and I was like, yo, I'm going to sit back and listen to Eminem real quick. And then Machine Kelly popped up, and I'm like, yo, it's true. He needed to give him a career to destroy him. So that's what I'm doing to him. I'm coming to retirement. You know what I'm saying? And I can't even take your name because you haven't done anything. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to be changing my name from taking names to, hold on, you don't got a name. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> don't even worry about it. Just stay where you're at. All right, well, What's so, his name? So, it's, 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 <laughs> it's not even matter. <laughs> So, listen, is it safe to say that you're the veterinarian and you're giving him the shots? Oh, well said. All right, well there said. you go. There you go. Bro. I don't even have to say shit. He said it better. There you go. Bra for main event, Renee Rodriguez, white boy man. It's been awesome chatting Thank with you, you today. And, of course, Dada, we're very proud of where you guys come from. You've been along the ride the whole time, and now you're right at the top. One of the hey, kings of remember, the remember, it's backyard bras. Yep. Before BYB... It was backyard bras. Look at it right here. Look at it right here. Yeah. Look at it right here. Yeah. Right here. I implore you guys, go check out Dogfight. See the history of this. It's amazing. You guys are going to see where they were. Now you're seeing where they are. And that's right here, fellas, right? Say you're welcome. What's up, fight fans? Welcome back to Zero to 60. It's our favorite time of the show as we do rapid fire, where I shoot off 10 questions to the guests, and they have 60 seconds to try to answer every question. Right now, who's in the hot chair? The Hialeah champ, Renee Rodriguez. Renee, are you ready? Shit, always been ready. Okay. You don't have to get ready when you're ready. Okay, so here we go. Renee. Where was you born? Tampa, Florida. What's your favorite subject in school? Shit was sex ed. <laughs> What's your game plan for the fight? Uh, you gotta win. What's your favorite pre-fight meal? What? Um, ice cream and Sunday. Why do you fight? Because I have to, I'm the underdog. One word to describe your opponent, MFD. And motherfucking don't matter. Wow. What? Who, who's that? <laughs> Fuck that. Who's that? How did you get the name White Boy Hialeah Champ? The backyard gave it to me. What can we expect from your fight? Shit, where's my belt at? Wow. What's your hobby on your downtime? Shit, sex. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you voting for in this year 2020 election? 2020 Trump, baby. We beat the 60 seconds. We beat the 60 seconds. Good job, man. <laughs> oh, welcome back, Fight fans. I'm here with Dada5000. And each week, we're going to give tribute to one of the fallen legends from the backyard. And this week, we're going to look at the bloodbath bare knuckle brawl between Jay Pressure and the champ. Hey, listen, this right here is one for the ages. It's definitely one that I think you would definitely enjoy. Both of these guys, they got out there, they laid it all on the line. It can only be one that gets his hand raised at the end of the night. Right. Well, let's jump right in, huh? All right, there we go. Boom, let's play. All right. Fighters to the ring, to the center. Doing what you do right there, huh? There you go. Yeah. No problem. Say it again. Eight limbs, no wrestling, no Eight limbs, no wrestling. So this was straight arms, legs, knees, chokes, submissions, everything except for ground. Gotcha. That's what you said. Right on. Both these guys have MMA experience like that. Yes. Right. Everything eight limbs, right? You agree with that? Obey my calls. You got a nice touch of the knuckles before the fight. There you go. Yeah, I like it. You got any questions? Protect yourself at all. 2008 here, right? Yeah. Right on. Here we go. Oh, last minute of that preparation. After you cut the grass? Yeah. yeah nice. Before every fight. Nice. Here we go. It's go time. Oh, oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whoa. Whoa. Oh. Mm. Uh-oh. 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 Oh, that got caught in the back of the head there. He's already, it's an uppercut, too. He's already bleeding. Wow, that punch in the back of the head cut him. Opened him oh, up. Wow, that right hand. He's getting tagged. Wow. Find like a champ though. You gotta experience this stuff. You can't, you can't, you can't hear about it. You have to come out and see it for yourself. Wow. Yeah, man, look at that blood from the back of his head. The punch actually that straight to the back. I saw that. Exactly. Yeah. 
caught him with an uppercut right after that, too. Jay Prussia, he has done all of his opponents in the same manner. Wow. Left carnage in the ring. Wow. Jay Prussia, boxing experience? Yes. Yeah. See a little in there. See a little in there. After that little uh, brawl, kind of regrouping here. Yeah, he's lining but, him up. Yeah, well, Champ doesn't want to step in. Now he's all bloody. He's been no, he's, beat up a bit. He's not going to step into that. Wow. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh. Big left hand over the top. Oh. Yeah, he liked, cut. Turned he, liked the, he definitely liked to turn Tim around. He did, sure did. You split. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, safety, you safety security is always first in the backyard. What'd you say there? He gashed pretty deep. Oh, uh, yeah. Look gashed at that. Oh, my God. Wow. Champ still wanted to go, though, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. But that's it. That's it. That's good. Wow. Listen, he had to take multiple stitches to the back of the head and to the eye. Wow. Who's that guy? <laughs> Say no more. Wow. Yeah, that's intense, but that's who we are. That's what we do. We put on the hits, as you see in the side, that fight there. Every place that he punched, champ, he opened up. Jay Pressure's no longer with us. No, RIP to Jay Pressure. He's no longer here. You know, um, he passed away back in 2019, you know, and uh, that's kind of tough, man, because, you know, you're here today, you're going, you're going tomorrow, and you never know when your number's going to get called and your time is going to be up, you know, but he's definitely one that will be truly missed because he always put on. He showed up and he showed out, and he always, you know, repped himself, the community, real family man, you know, and he trained hard. And he said, Dada, this is gonna be my way out. Yeah, he, won, he was gonna be on a future BYB card and he earned it. You know, he earned that spot, you know, to come out here and show the world, you know what I'm saying? Hey, listen, it's not a fluke. I belong here and I'm going to the top. Yeah, you know, Jay Pressure no longer being with us, but he's absolutely a huge part of what was BYB, and now he's going to be enshrined into the Hall of Fame here, and you're going to put him up on the walls here so he could overlook all the action and be part of everything that goes on moving forward. Definitely, you know, he was a true pioneer. You know, he showed up and showed out. He gave you everything that he had. He didn't leave with an ounce of energy. He put it all out for your entertainment and enjoyment purposes. You know, he was a stand-up dude. He's fought several times inside of the backyard. He hasn't lost a fight in the backyard, you know. Saddened by his passing in 2019, he last told me, he was like, Dada, I want to come and I want to I wanna fight, you know. And I said, listen, you got a spot here. You earned that in the backyard. And he started training here and there, you know, and he was getting himself together. When then I got the call, you know, telling me of his, uh, of his passing. But yeah, he definitely was a historian, you know, because he is an athlete. He's not new to combat growing up in Miami-Dade County, you know, where you have to fight every day of your life, especially if you're going to school, you know. He was definitely one of those individuals that you could not judge a book by his cover because he had to have something in his hands because everybody that he hit, he opened them up, you know what I'm saying, like a bag of chips, just like mm -hmm. poof. But we're going to, you know, honor him, you know, we're gonna hang him above the rafters, you know, not just him, you know, everybody that played a part inside the development of where this thing is at. You have Chauncey, you have Tree, you have Big Sean, you have so many. If we don't do it, you know, how often would they be spoken about or talked about? You know, so they shall live on through the memories of us who was there with them at the same time. This is what we do. We're pillars of strength inside the community, BYB Extreme. We give back. It doesn't matter if it's from kid toys in December for the kids, book bags, school supplies, turkeys doing Thanksgiving like we're going to do this year. You know, we are pillars of strength, and we understand that it's not where you're at. It's where you come from. That's the memorable part of the journey. Because you're here now, but you just didn't magically get here. 
you know, you had to go through something. If you haven't never been through something, you can't talk about nothing. We've had a, a roller coaster journey. A lot of people that started out are not here. And for those that made it, these fallen heroes and soldiers of the backyard will never be forgotten. And forever you know? enshrined right here in the BYB uh, proving ground here in Miami. There you go, you know, and these guys were the true definitions of zero to 60. You know, I also want to say, when you look at this, right, this is BYB Extreme Presents, you know, dot of 5,000, put them things on them. You know, um, this is good music, good money heroes. Dot of 5,000, three or five day county. We developed a platform for people to stand on and shine. And this is just another outlet, you know what I'm saying, that we're giving the community. Because what we do, not all the time, you know, we do it for the cameras. You know, half of this stuff goes on unnoticed and undocumented. This is just the beginning. You know, we're just getting started. BYB Extreme, nobody out there hit harder. There you go. <laughs> all right, fight fans, and there you go. I told you we're on fire, Dada. Yes, indeed. Listen, I had my phone on 9-1, ready to press that next one for the ambulance to come and put this show out. <laughs> right on. And next week, we'll be back with another blazer. Yes, you know, when you look at BYB, Envision the four seasons. Why? Because we're perfect. BYB Extreme, we make the weekends. You know, see you guys back here next week, same time. And remember to wear your seatbelt, because we're going to take you on another epic wild ride.